It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey everybody, this is Esther Gullius, the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes, and we're really excited. If you're somebody that uh, is looking at re-upping, changing, wondering about insurance, health insurance, we have a special guest in studio uh, today, uh, our very own navigator, uh, Tim Eliason. He's going to be here to... Uh, answer all your questions. If you know anybody that needs help with health insurance, the New York State of Health, we have a specialist here in studio. And Tim, thanks for coming. Thank you, Esther. It's great to be with you. I just realized looking at the date, I forgot uh, today's my wedding anniversary. Oh my gosh. You, 10, better, 10. you better stop and get some flowers on the way home. I'll you know, you. that was really my only input was to make sure it was a date I could remember. And 1010 was my only input. <laughs> in the whole thing. Okay. Well, um, uh, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 cell phone. So we're going to talk about the New York State of Health who qualifies, all the different kind of programs, what is, what's the best insurance, how, how you can find out whether as an employee you should leave your employer and maybe go to the New York State of Health, and that may be an option for you. And I tell you the truth, we could save you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars here today. So again, if you need insurance, uh, health insurance, if your kids might need health insurance, if you have a neighbor or somebody that's, have them uh, listen to the show, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 cell phone. And I want to remind everybody that if you're interested in joining us for the EG Tax Tax School, that's going to start this week. I think we have about 20 openings right now. So uh, it's a great program. You can learn about taxes, your own taxes. And at the end of the course, we do hire the successful graduates for, uh, for novice positions, and it's a great, great opportunity. You can register by going to egtax.com, and you can register online. The, the actual training is at no charge. The only charge that we have is we pass on the cost of the book because the author just didn't want to give it to us for free and the cost of the software. So it's very reasonable and it's tax deductible. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to pick your brain, Tim. Okay, I'm All ready. Right. So when is open enrollment? What is open enrollment? Do you really have to wait till the open enrollment to get, to get insurance? How does it all work? Well, open enrollment kind of is different phases. You know, right now, if you're in the marketplace, your re-enrollment, and everything that you would do, or if you're not in the marketplace and you don't have insurance. Okay, let's let's stop. People don't know what in the marketplace means. You mean like I'm down at the Eastern Hills Mall or, or Walmart? I mean, what is in the marketplace? The marketplace is an online, basically a marketplace where you would buy insurance. So it's the New York State of Health mm-hmm. website exactly. that has all the different kind of insurances. And just because you're on that website doesn't mean that you have unusual insurance. It's still all the regular insurance companies, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. You know, the, the Blue Cross Blue Shield Independent Health, all those that you would see in employer-based programs, and all the insurance companies that are available are done by county. So you have to make sure that you ask about what insurance companies are available in your county. In your so, county. Exactly. So Erie might be different than Niagara or over in Wyoming. And that's all on that New York State of Health exactly. website. Exactly, exactly. So when you're talking about being in the marketplace, it means that that's what you're using to get your health insurance. Exactly. And your health insurance is just like all the health insurance. I mean, the, the when you have a Blue Cross Blue Shield card, they don't say, oh, that I don't like that one. That's from New York State of Health. Mm-hmm. I mean, right? It's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Exactly. It's even, independent health. Even the cards that I see where people are maybe leaving an employer-based program and coming into the marketplace, the metallic levels that you see, the bronze, the silver, the gold, the platinum, even those names are being adopted by those companies outside the marketplace. So it's apples to apples. So you can see what you have when your employer-based program and may say, well, you have a silver employer-based program. Well, you could go into the marketplace and say, I'm going to look at the silver level in the marketplace and see what that is. So it's, you know, it's not like you have to compare different okay. plans between inside and outside right, so the marketplace. So that's to make that simple. So mm-hmm. to go into the marketplace, you go to New York State of Health, 
and and it it's right there. You can look at all the plans, what the deductibles are. It's mm-hmm. all there for you. Yep. All right. All, right now, when you look at them, though, do remember that those are the 2015 po- um, policies and 2015 premiums. With the open enrollment that's coming up starting November 1st, that's when the marketplace will be providing the actual plans available and the premiums for 2016. Which I understand most are going up, but a couple are coming down. Yep. The the uh, New York State government, the insurance companies ask for a 13.5% across, you know, most of them, 13.5% and on average increase in the premiums. Uh, New York only gave them 7%. But some of the companies are going down, so they're not all increasing their premiums within there. So it just depends what company that you may have or like what plan. Like what's one of an example of a company that's going down? Well, Independent Health, uh, they've asked for their um, premiums in the marketplace to be cut by 10.36%. And that obviously was approved by the state of New York, and right. somebody's going to cut it. Um, some of the other companies, like um, uh, Fidelis and Blue Cross Blue Shield, on average, theirs are going up about 7%. Some of the companies that are in there, like the Empire Health Plan, theirs are being increased 13.5%, the premiums. So there's a wide range of what the premiums are going to do, so you really have to look at the plans and okay, see what now, there is. Now, every, I don't know if you guys all know, but it, everybody has to have health insurance. And if you don't have qualified health insurance, then you can be penalized, mm-hmm. right? But that's that's the big rule but the little rule is not everybody has to pay for it so if you're sitting around and you do not have health insurance because you do, you and you haven't even looked at what's available through the marketplace you may be completely blown away because many people will not have to pay at all uh, for their health insurance and and would be able to go on Medicaid now Medicaid in the past used to be have a big stigma attached. If you had a house, if you had assets, if you had savings accounts, you didn't qualify. Is that true anymore? No, that's not true. And, and Did you, know, you hear Tim? He said, no, that's not true. Nope. You can have a house. You can have savings accounts. You can have investments. But what really counts? Well, just the income. The income in the household, basically not who's under your roof, but your tax household, who's on your tax return as far as the filers themselves and the dependents. So all the income that would be attributable on your tax return from all the people living in your house that are your dependents. So it might be you and maybe your teenage 17-year-old son, Mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that would be your tax household. So it would be your W-2, your Social Security, your unemployment, Mm -hmm. and your son W-2. Yep. you know, And that makes makes your... The income from your tax household. Yep, and the one thing to always remember about Social Security, it's not just the taxable portion of Social Security, it is your gross Social Security benefits. All right, so so let's say in our little situation here, uh, Dad doesn't make a lot of money. He's got uh, maybe some Social Security disability and a small W-2, mm-hmm. and the, the kid doesn't make any money, and but he's got a house that's paid for, mm-hmm. and he thinks to himself, I can't get insurance from the marketplace because I have a paid-for asset. And let's say his income is between the two of them twenty two thousand. What would he get? Well, if the twenty two thousand between the two of them, just the dad and the teenage right. son, well, they could either qualify for Medicaid. It depends on the scenario for dad because if he's on Social Security disability, he might be on Medicare. Medicare, right? So you know he'd have an existing plan, but we'd still use his income to calculate for the household. So, you know, for a household of two, he could go into either Medicaid if as long as, you know, the 22000 But he has 000. a paid for a house? Yeah. And that's okay? Mm-hmm. What if he had $40,000 in the bank? Still same scenario. So he could still get Medicaid, I right? Had, yep, that question I mean, is not on the marketplace. So, and so th- these are things that I wanted people to make sure they understood is that it's not your old Medicaid anymore. And then how much is, if you are on Medicaid, how much is your deductible? Zero. Zero, and how much is your out of your copay and uh, your um, yeah your copays during the year? Well, it depends. Out of pocket. Out of pocket. You know, if you have a prescription, you might pay three dollars for the prescription. But pretty much, it's Zero. all covered. Exactly. Yeah. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star nine thirty in a cell phone. I mean, we have. Uh, our very own navigator, uh, Tim Eliason, he is 
a whiz at all the ins, the outs. The We're going to talk about maybe you're in an employer plan and you should get out of it because maybe you would save a lot more money and you wouldn't have to pay any deductibles and no out of pocket, no copays. And so, but we're going to take a break. We're going to be on the, uh, we're going to see you on the other side. Give us a call if you have any questions. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. And if you're somebody that's looking for uh, some great information about what's available in the upcoming enrollment and it's just driving you crazy because you're saying, I just want it easy, it ain't easy anymore, is it? No, no. It's becoming more involved. You know, each year that it goes by, especially as other providers come into the marketplace and as the rules change, um, you know, that type of thing. It, you know, it becomes a lot more involved, and, and they are getting more in-depth as far as the information that they ask you on the application on the marketplace. So there are some questions, and there are some that are not in layman's terms, per se. So, yeah, they're you know, in tax lingo. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, like Magi. I thought the Magi were the guys that came and brought this stuff to Jesus when he was a baby, but it's, it's modified adjusted gross income. And the other one they threw in there, too, is uh, do you have Title II income in your house? Great. Yeah, you know. If you don't know what Title II income is, which most of the cases is Social Security, right. you know, you see that question, you're going, I don't know, do now, I have Title II? you think that they would just make it in layman's language, you know? Okay, so though I, I, I understand that um, Health Republic is closing its doors, correct? Exactly. And, and it affects how many people locally? Um, 120,000 in New York. And, so that's and, a lot. Yes, exactly. In Western New York, it was a big popular one because it was the least expensive in most counties as far as the premium. It was. It was such a deal. When I would, I'd look at it, I'd think, it's a no-brainer. You just got to do Health Republic. You know, even in the bronze plan, which is the lowest premium with the highest deductible, but even for the platinum, people could buy a platinum Cadillac plan in Health Republic that was going to have a lower premium than a lot of the other companies at the lower, higher deductible plans. Right, right. So it was a huge look. Okay, so if you're somebody with Health Republic, mm-hmm. right? Should you panic and jump out the window today? I mean, what's the deal? No, no, don't don't do that. Your insurance is good. Um, they'll be sending out letters if they haven't already received one. I know there's been some in the media. Um, they will cease business and stop uh, December 31st, 2015. So it coincides with you know the start of open enrollment, Jan- or excuse me, November 1st, and then you can find a plan through the marketplace. Now, the downfall, just as we just discussed, is that it was definitely the least expensive insurance plan in there. Um, they haven't really replaced it because it was really a nonprofit co-op, so they have not anything replacing it. But just as we talked about before, we have insurance companies that are cutting rates. So there will be some plans that are in there. Now, they're introducing a new essential plan. So this is something... Which is the one we talked about last week. And, and w- Chris and I didn't have it right. Uh, Chris gave me like the thumbnail sketch. It isn't just catastrophic. The, no. The new essential plan is really even better than we said last week. Oh, yeah. So why don't you explain that? Yep. You know, and for the catastrophic one, when you hear that in the marketplace, it's for people under 30. And it's just, you know, low premium. Something terrible happens, it covers it. The essential plan is an extension beyond the, well, Medicaid's what they used to call, but it's called managed care now. And it's an extension beyond that. And it, it kind of phases in before you would go into a full pay, full premium uh, plan in the marketplace. So basically what it is, is you could pay. Right, now wait, let me interpret here. Sure. Because I like, when, when, when uh, I just want people to understand what you said. In other words, this new insurance plan mm-hmm. before somebody would go to a full pay on their own no subsidies mm-hmm. this is kind of a stopgap in between exactly and it, it's kind of a lovely plan is it not it is it's you know they phased out family health plus they kept health, child health plus in new york but they phased out family health plus and this is kind of its replacement you can have a premium per person from zero to twenty dollars um, your maximum out of pocket would be thirty zero to twenty dollars a month. Exactly right? from zero to twenty dollars. Exactly month. twenty dollars a month. Okay, and that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Well, you know, in your household, you know, if you got a I family know. of four, you could pay eighty bucks. That's you know, true. so you'd have to cut back on the Starbucks or whatever right. it may be. But the other thing too is it also decreases. There's no deductible, 
And it, the ranges of the tiers, I should say, of the out-of-pocket maximum are zero, two hundred, or two thousand dollars per person. That's very much less than the lowest bronze plan that you would get in the marketplace. So it's an incredible plan. Plus, it has vision and dental with it. Wow. And you know, even if you're in the twenty dollar a month, you so might. So we were talking like, let's say you're a family of four, mm-hmm. and again, this is for you don't qualify for Medicaid. Mm-hmm. This is just beyond Medicaid while you're, uh, but it really is a little more than, me- you're, you're a poor, uh, not poor, but you're somebody that's, what, your income's under 100, over 150% of poverty. Is that the maximum? 138% is that, but 150% gets you basically right. the same plan. Right, mm-hmm. so maximum 100, and so you're looking at 40000 for a family of four? 48500 for a family of four. Family of four. And if that's the case, what would that pa- family pay a month? Well, it, you know, when they're in that range with that, they'd probably end up paying $20 for each of the adults, and then the Child Health Plus is still in there, and it still works in the equation. So that'd be 40 Exactly. And then, you know, if the kids would probably fall in a range of either the 9 or the $18 for the Child Health Plus. Right. So if you have the two kids, you know, you're looking at the $40 for the adults, the $18 for the two kids, you got $58 a month premium with no deductible, right. and it covers everything. Right. You know, we're not just talking, you know, you know, visit to the doctor. It's covering your prescriptions, your hospitalization. You know, you end up, you know, stepping on a bottle cap and going to urgent care. You know, it's going to cover that. Right. And the co-pays are very, very low. It was interesting. We were talking before the show. We were saying that there are some people that when you really put a pencil to it, if you're working, you're you're working two or three jobs because you want to make the money so you can pay for your health insurance. In some of these cases, it's actually better to not be working because the subsidies, uh, the the insurance is so inexpensive. There is no um, out of pocket, and the deductible is very low. I mean, it's and that's what makes it so complicated. Exactly, you know, and you have to sit and look at that because everything where the rubber meets the road is on that tax return. And if we can see with the health insurance that they're paying and what their sources of income are and those where they're coming from, you know, are you really bringing in extra money to the household? You know, if, you know, when it's all said and done, you worked a whole year at a second job, but really you only brought $200 into the house. After all the taxability and the extra expenses exactly. and non uh, uh, help that you would get from the federal government. Exactly. Right? exactly. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. And uh, I know we've had Larry waiting a long time. This is my friend Larry from Georgia. Hey, Larry, how you doing? Good, Esther. Good, Esther. Honey, I, I've got a couple of fast questions. I, I hey, you know what, Larry, i got to interrupt you. Do you know that Tiff and Chris are in Georgia right now? No, no, go away. I'll, Honest to God, to, you should. I should give you their their cell phone. They could probably have you for dinner, uh, uh, Mar- meet I, you for dinner. But uh, anyway, I, yeah, they da- they just drove down to see uh, her stepsister today. So anyway, but uh, what's your questions, Larry? Uh, well, first, first, uh, later on, I need to get I need to get the numbers. We can call. I love to meet them and take them out. Whatever. <laughs> uh, that's one. But questions here. Few questions. One, Esther. Uh, I own my house free and clear. I'm in the process of doing a couple of renovations. Recently, I did a, I, I bought a new HVAC system. Cost me about eleven thousand, roughly. Um, my understanding is that um, those, those home renovations will actually end up lowering my cost basis. Meaning, when I sell the house, I'll have a higher tax bill. That's that's one question I want you to clarify. Okay, no, it's your personal residence, right? There's no rental income. This is just your home, correct? Correct. Correct. All right. Are you you're single, Larry? Yes, I am. Okay, so your gains up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars are going to be tax free, right? So, um, if you have your if you paid two hundred thousand for your house and you made improvements, including your HVAC, let's say fifty, now your cost basis goes up to two hundred and fifty. If you sell it for three fifty, that's a hundred thousand dollar gain. It'll be completely tax free. It doesn't decrease your tax basis it increases it and as long as your gain is not over 250,000 then it's going to be all tax free. Esther, I'm going to ask you a fast question. Yeah. Um I have a well, I had a um a um MLP mesh limit a partnership in a, in a taxable a tax mutual fund. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lost a bit so we decided to sell it take the loss right off the loss I guess my capital gain mm-hmm. and then buy it back in you know 30 days whatever. Mm-hmm. So so 
someone told me that that may be a bad move because uh, the dividends may end up, you know, lower my my cost basis, and I have a tax I have a higher tax liability. Is that correct? Okay, it it you, there two, it's two different things. When you sell, when you really sell your uh, MLP. I when did. It, okay, then that whatever it is, your adjusted whatever the get losses that were suspended and carry forward are going to be handled when upon the sale. When you finally, whatever happens, if you do buy it back after 31 days and you buy it back, then you're going to come up with a new cost basis. So, um, and if you get the dividends on that that you didn't get initially, then you're you may end up with a gain when you sell it the next time. So you got a loss now, and later on you may have a gain. But who knows what's going to happen in the future? Okay, okay. And then how can I get their number later on from you? Uh, you know what? I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to have my producer take your phone number, and I'll, I'll text it to you, okay? Thank you, sweetie. Thanks, Larry. Hang on. I'm Esther Galeas, the tax lady, 803 star 930 on his cell phone. Larry's our special friend from Atlanta, Georgia, and he, it, it, I feel like he's part of the family. He actually is part of the family now, but, you know, it's, it's great to have friends even down south. Exactly. I love his accent. All right, let's go back to the phones here. We're going to talk to Dave in Amherst. Hi, Dave. How can we help you? Hi. Uh, yeah, listen, I got an unusual question, or maybe not, but... Uh I I just got full custody of my granddaughter, and uh, my granddaughter is on Social Security disability, so she has Medicare. Uh, where do I go get health insurance for her to cover the rest of the stuff? The Medicare, well, right now the marketplace is not ready to handle this. Uh, what would be your secondary? You know, Medicare is the primary and it's not ready to handle the secondary. So you'd still have to go the old-fashioned way, and you'd have to go to the Department of Social Services to get something that would help you um, fill in the gaps, if you will, for any expenses that kind of fall through the cracks for the, uh, from the Medicare to your out-of-pocket. So you'd want to contact the Social Services on that one. So, now, the question I have that with, with that, I don't know if you know it, but would they give her Medicaid based on my income or how does that work who has the custody and who are you claiming that her as a dependent yeah i'm going to be because i just got full custody of her exactly you know so that your income would be in there because again like we talked about a little bit earlier you know everything driving the what you pay or what your opportunities or what's available for you is based on who is on the tax return and what the income is there so her your income would be included in her application Okay, then then she wouldn't be eligible for Medicaid, so I'd have to go someplace else. Exactly, exactly. But you could still go well, into you, the marketplace. You can, still, you can still go in the marketplace. Yeah, exactly. You, you don't you don't have to give up the marketplace. You just uh, you just are not going to get uh, Medicaid necessarily. Exactly. But you might get a subsidy though. You might fall in that essential plan that we just talked right. about, or you might fall into a child health plus plan. You know, depending on the age. See, but the whole thing, Dave. You you and and again, what do we charge to do this? To help them, we charge nothing. So, <laughs> so in my opinion, give us a call at EG Tax six three two seven eight eight six, and we'll be happy to help you at no charge. We have to break for the news. We'll be right back on the other side. I like that. That's Wings, right? No, that's the that's the no, that's the Beatles, right? Well, it's just Paul McCartney. That's Paul McCartney. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. We have our special guest, our navigator, Tim Eliason, and we're talking about taxes and health insurance, and we sure would love to help you. So if you want to give us a call, we'd love to help. And we have, I have a surprise person on line one. I don't know who it is. I'm Esther Golius. How can I help you? Hello? Hello? Hi, can I help you? Yeah, Esther, I'm a, a longtime customer, and I love your work, but I have a friend, um, son, who's in some, he, uh, he needs some help. Um, first of all, his father had cancer, and he got, lost his job about a year ago, and I didn't know it, but my friend told me he never filed taxes during the year when he made nothing, and also doesn't have health insurance, and now he's worried, like, it's too late they're going to come after me they don't have anything to take but outside of walking across the real grand 
is there any way to help him? No, I mean, really, if, I don't know what his income is, but, you know, not everybody... There is no- there's no income. Then you don't have then you don't have to worry. If you have no income, you don't have to file. And here's the other good news. If you have very low income, not even very low income, but lower income, they're going to give them free health insurance. Am I right, Tim? Exactly. Even in a scenario where somebody maybe loses their job partway through the year, the way the marketplace application works, if they're projected, because everything in the marketplace is based on projections, not historical, but projections, so that they lost their job in July, and then for August through the end of the year, their income is going to be far less. They yeah. may qualify for something within the marketplace that would be very low-cost insurance, kind of throwing aside the money they made the first half of the year. Or or completely subsidize insurance. Exactly, exactly. So you tell your friend's son to call Tim, will help Tim will help him get his insurance. It sounds to me like it's going to be completely on the on the uh, ta- on the taxpayer. It's not it's not going to be taxable. It's not going to cost him anything. Where do we find Tim? Oh, I'll Tim Tim is from our corporate office 6327886. This time of year. Falls Boulevard. On Niagara Falls Boulevard and okay, then during tax go. time. All right, I'll call Monday and I'll get him in th- there. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very right, much. Bye-bye, dear. Uh during tax time, Tim hangs out in, at our Lockport office. He's a supervisor there too, so he wears two hats, the tax specialist hat and the navigator hat. And actually, I'm going to be splitting time so for those people up in Niagara County that are clients of ours, because I'll be teaching the class, the tax class at the Lockport office. Uh-huh. I'm going to hang out there in the afternoons on Fridays. Oh, and then you can so if somebody see people doesn't there. Want to, exactly. So I'll be able to be basically in two locations, oh, Amherst great. and Lockport. That's so. great. But I'm going to tell you, uh, it's it's hard to believe, but uh, because everything's kind of turned upside down with this uh, this health insurance stuff, and and you'd be surprised, even if your employer is paying part of your health insurance you may not want to stay with the plan so how does that work Tim well if you take a look and we take a look at your income and what your portion of the premium is it's not what the the total premium is that the employer pays but your portion of it and it's greater than nine and a half percent of your modified adjusted gross income on your tax return you may be eligible to go into the marketplace and shop the insurance and see if there's something less expensive. Okay, so if I'm making thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, I always like to make tangible things because people understand that better. If I'm making thirty thousand dollars and nine point five percent of my salary is twenty eight fifty, mm-hmm. all right. Mm-hmm. So if I'm paying three thousand dollars for my health for my portion of the health insurance exactly i don't have to stay with my employer exactly right exactly and i can co- go to the marketplace now this is especially important let's say you're working at a at a retail job mm-hmm. okay and you're making thirty thousand mm-hmm. dollars and you have uh two kids at home mm-hmm what would what what would it really cost you if you went into the marketplace if you were making thirty thousand dollars? You would probably qualify for a plan that you'd probably be either in the essential plan because if there's just you know that's under that family size we're looking at the thirty one forty thousand uh-huh. dollars, or you know you may qualify for something and the biggest savings for you compared to what your employer plan is is a far less deductible and your potential out of pocket your co pays or your co insurance would be much less in the marketplace. So if this person went into the essential plan, Mm -hmm. they might pay a whole $240 a year Mm -hmm. and maybe nothing in copays? Well, you know, or something in a little bit, you know, but all their preventative. So right. your annual physical and anything is, and as the New York State says, they want you healthy. So they're going to pay for anything that is preventative care for your test. So here, so here I am. I'm working, let's say, at a retail place, and I was pl- plunking out three thousand dollars. But if I if I actually leave my employer. I could actually save a lot of money and get better coverage. Exactly, exactly. Probably. And that's what blows my mind. And that's why, you know, it, it all sounds like Greek sometimes because you think, oh, how can this? this can't be true? I'm not in agreement with it. I have to tell you, I'm a very conservative person. But for me not to tell you would be absolutely wrong. I want, I want to make every, I want to avail everybody of what's out there. And you they know? may, and maybe if their employer doesn't offer it, they'll pick up Vision and Dental also. That's true. That's true because that's part of the essential, essential plan. plan. Oh my gosh! 
Okay, let's go back to the phones. We're going to go to Connie in Buffalo. Hey, Connie, how can we help you? Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Esther. Um, my husband expired 12 years ago, and I'm on the deed as a surviving spouse. Mm-hmm. Now, whenever I expire, uh, my my children uh, may want to sell the home. Mm-hmm. Should I have my name removed from the deed? Okay. If you're if you are going to if when you pass away your name's on the deed and your children inherit the house, all yeah. right? Then your children are going to get what's called a stepped up basis. So, if it was worth 200,000 on the date of your death, then and they sell it let's say 5 months later for 200,000, their basis for for their cost is going to be what it was on the date of your death, 200,000. If they sell it for 200,000, there is no gain. It won't talk cost them anything but let's just say that you say i want to change the deed and you gift them the house now what would happen is whatever you and your husband paid for the house back whenever that becomes their basis plus a stepped up basis for him when he passed away so let's say after all that happens the adjusted basis is 70 and they sell it for 200,000 they end up with a $130,000 gain so it's not something you would do without advice of a tax specialist and your attorney if if you are not somebody that is not looking at possibility of going to a nursing home you just might either want to do a life estate if you want to live there or keep it the way it is what about his name should i remove his name on the deed well i i guess if you're going to do a life estate, have the attorney take care of it at that point in time. But it's not a problem. Ultimately, the kids will be able to. It it helps them later on. They don't have to do the 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 proof that he had passed away and he was and everything. So if you wanted to make it easier for them now, that would be a, a nice thing to do. But it really isn't necessary. You might want to call your attorney and have them double check. But I think you're going to find that it it's not it's not going to preclude them from selling the house. Oh, okay. I was okay, wondering dear. What, what would happen to them, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Esther. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, and we're going to go to Margaret in Lancaster. Hey, Margaret. How are you? Good. What can we help you with? Well, I um, I uh, was in the car, and I always turn your station on. <laughs> thank you. And um, I just, it was a call before the last two calls. Someone talking about some type of uh, insurance. You see, I, I never wanted to retire, but at 62 and a half, 61 and a half, I took a big hit on my Social Security because I wound up in a, two nursing facilities for almost a year ah. after a terrible accident. And I never <laughs> thought I'd retire, never wanted to, but physically, uh, I like to call myself permanently challenged, but right. I'm perfectly crippled. Right. So, so do you? What are you doing for health insurance right now, Margaret? Well, I get Blue Crosses, and I don't know. I, are you paying for it yourself? That's the supplemental. All right. Are you on Medicare. Social Security disability uh, medical no, Medicaid? No, no, I make I make too much money on my Social Security and my pension, and it, it believe me, I just about make ends meet. Okay, but know? let let me go back. So, are you on Social Security disability? No. No, just Social Security. Social Security so, so the and your insurance small, comes through a, a small pension. Does your insurance come through your employ your former employer? No, no, no. Are I you just buying? You're you're just buying it on your own. Are you on yeah. Medi- Medicare? I'm on Medicare. Okay. I, okay. I have uh, as my supplemental. I have Blue Crosses. Okay. Now two years ago they charged me zero. Yes. They have the twenty percent right. Um. I forget what they charged me last year, but now it's up to like $39 a month. Mm-hmm. To tell you the truth, I haven't paid them anything, and I want to re-up with them. But I, the reason for my call is I heard you talking about $20 a month for adults. Well, how much? Now, she's not on, She does she? if she's on Medicare, she has to take Medicare, right? Yes, exactly. So exactly. She, there's nothing she can do. Nothing she can do. And, and with it sounds like with her income for what she's paying, the plan that she's you know, knowing what the Medicare yep. plans are through Blue Cross Blue Shield, she's probably not going to fall in the household income for the essential care to have it be her secondary. Um, so, you know, what she's getting. Yeah, you know, but I only make, I only gross. I gross 17000 a year. And that includes your Social Security? 
And my pension, yeah. You know what? Why don't you do call call um, because you know we're on a radio show here. So why don't you call Tim on Monday six three two seven eight eight six so he can go over six, everything? Three, because two, if wait now six three two seven eight eight six. You guys are adorable. Well, thank you. We really do want to we'll, help. We'll definitely. You know, we have uh, and Tim is very adorable too. I, we've. Well, uh, no, I mean. He, he, if he's if he's as nice looking as he sounds. Oh, he's a, <laughs> if it wasn't his anniversary, I'd flirt, flirt with him today. So, oh, <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks Mark. Careful, my wife might be listening. <laughs> thank you very very much. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Well, she knows I'm. Hard. First of all, I could be your mother. <laughs> that wouldn't be very cool. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady. Eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on cell phone. We're going to take a short break. We'll see you on the other side. The Wolfman. Werewolf of London. Yes. Hey, I'm uh, Esther Golius, the tax lady. 8030930, 8030930. And we're talking insurance and taxes. And But I'm going to tell you, if you don't get a chance to get through today to talk to Tim, we EG Tax does not charge to help you get your insurance through the through the marketplace. We are not getting a dime from anybody you know this is just strictly a public service we do and I'm going to tell you <laughs> it is not easy as a matter of fact that last caller I was hoping that she I didn't understand how she could be on Medicare um, so we're thinking it must have been SSD so we're not sure that's one of the reasons we'd like her to call but it is a big problem if you retire before 65 before you can get on Medicare mm -hmm. that there's a, and you had insurance and then you got this five-year problem and that's another thing that you help exactly. people with. Exactly. A lot of times I'm sitting down with folks that are going to retire early. They're going to take uh, Social Security at 62. Then they start to look and see what they have to pay for health insurance. And so they're getting their Social Security and they say, well, I guess I'm going to have to take greater distributions monthly from my 401k pension retirement right. fund. Because I can't afford it. And because I can't afford it. Well, then all of a sudden the formula starts to change for what their insurance would cost them. Plus it makes more of their Social Security taxable. taxable. Right. So, you know, there's kind of the proverbial, you know, dog chasing the tail. Right, that's right, that's right. Exactly. And, um, again, if you don't understand what we're talking about, we understand it. And we, the reason that's so important is you don't want to make these decisions on thousands and thousands of dollars you're committing to in health insurance. And you don't understand how the whole thing fits together, the puzzle fits together. And exactly. And remember, too, with us being in the marketplace, you know, when you go to your employer-based program, they may sit down and here's A and here's B. You know, we have and these two plans. you can choose plans. either one. Exactly. Right. You get A or B. And a lot of times they'll throw out there and says, well, your deductible is this, your co-insurance and, and stuff. You know, I sit down with everybody, and not only do we get them to what they can afford and what their options are, but then I say, okay, let's look at the plans now. How do we pick the plan? What are your doctors? What are your prescription needs? What's your medical history? You know, by the time I'm done between doing their taxes and everything else, the only thing I haven't done is their confession. And, you know, so I <laughs> and have... And you'll do that part-time, too. Yeah, I'm working on that one. I'm taking that <laughs> online. So, but, you know, you know, I'll know everything about them, and that way I can sit with them and say, okay, let's look at this plan because right. you have your least exposure for out-of-pocket because of your medical situation. So there are people listening that have employer-provided plans and your contribution is more than 9.5% of your income and you can legally leave that plan and go into the marketplace and uh, and maybe get a full subsidy or get into this essential plan and have your all of your associated uh, expenses drop, like your co-pays and your out-of-pocket. So those are things that we want to help you with. And I wanted to get here to Kathy in Hamburg. Hey, Kathy, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, my pleasure. Esther, I had a question, actually. It regards the required minimum distribution. Sure. If someone waits till they're 70 and a half mm -hmm. to take the initial distribution, mm -hmm. Must they take two distributions in that one year? Then? Okay. If in a required minimum distribution means this is the amount that once you reach age 70 and a half, you have to start withdrawing from your IRAs or annuities or, or pensions that, because you haven't taken anything out. 
in the year you turn 70 and a half, let's say this year in September you're going to turn 70 and a half, the first year they allow you to ignore that calendar year. And then you have to take your first distribution between January the 1st of, the, of 2016 and April the 1st. And then you would double dip and take a second one in 2016. So the first year, only the first year, uh -huh. you can wait until tax time and take it any time between January and April, then take a second one in that, in that second year. Okay, so the one you take between January and April, would that count on your 15 taxes? It's when you receive it. No, it'd, it'd go on 16. Oh, so then... So you wait a whole year to pay the taxes. Okay, but would I end up paying like twice for... Well, it, it all depends because what happens... I did a seminar this morning I was explaining this very same thing. The, the standard deduction and personal exemption, uh, if you're married filing joint return over 65, is almost $22,000. So if you are just receiving Social Security, maybe you and your, your spouse... And maybe you guys are at twenty thousand in social security. Half of that is ten, so you can actually and and so you can actually take out twelve thousand um, dollars and have it still be tax free without an RMD. Just using the standard deduction and personal exemption. So it all depends on how much other income you have. It's I like think. Tim is saying, if you're taking it out of a taxable source, like your four hundred one k then it it can make your social security more taxable so it's like it's like if you do this on the left hand side it makes the right hand side more taxable right, but if right. as long as you stay under that $22,000 figure you know right, in right. taxable income nothing's going to be taxable i see esther may i ask one quick question sure. too about medicare uh -huh. if someone last year had to pay the for Medicare, the basic amount plus like an extra fee because of their income. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that amount is going to be next year? The the amount that's coming out of Social Security right now is one hundred and four dollars and ninety five cents. That covers Part A and B. That okay. would come out of your Social Security, right. and then you know you can pick up what's called C which is basically the doctor part of it plus prescriptions. But they also charge you like a penalty, so to speak, exactly. if you're a higher income person. Right. Exactly. You know right. how they compute that? No, I, they have, don't have the numbers on that with the calculation of that. Yeah, we I don't see. have that. I'm sorry, Kathy. Okay, so that's not like a set amount like the 104? No. 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 Oh, I see. Okay. Nope. Well, thank you very you're much. You're welcome. I really appreciate all your help. All right, help. thank you, Kathy. Thanks. Okay, and we're going to go to Tony. Hey, Tony, how can we help you? Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Esther. Hey. Uh, question for you. I'm a uh, very small businessman, 32 years in business, and I own uh, my own uh, commercial property, and I actually reside on the same property, and I'm not going to get into the reason why. Sure. Uh, you know, it's a financial issue, so I, I, I made it livable, and I run my small business out of the same property. I haven't had health insurance since my kids finally uh, were out of my vicarious responsibility. I, you know, I, I canceled my own health insurance. They were on their own. How old are you, Tony? I'm 54 and a half. Boy. Now, what is your net profit, Ryan? Uh, my net profit uh, was $642 last oh year. Oh, my God, Tony. Are you, is Tony glad he called? Oh, yes. Tony. Yeah. If this is your only income? That's all I got. Tony, you got free health insurance. And My you know, gosh! Anyone want to know the best part it. of it? If you call me to, or on Monday, Monday or Tuesday when we're back in the office, actually I'd be able to tell you that you were covered as of October 1st because they backdate yeah. with the, with the Tony, insurance you're Tony, 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 call. Okay, I will call. My right. question is this. Yes. What kind of risk do I put my personal property? And I, you know, this is a government-funded program. My concern. Oh is, no, is, no, 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 no! It's not. Doesn't it doesn't work like that? You're, you're. It's not like it's not the old Medicare. It's okay. not. It's not the old Medicaid where they're piling up all the money they gave you and they take it away when you die. That's oh, not the I way it is anymore. I sell the property. They put a lien nope, on my. It's my not, okay. Nope. Nope. This nope. ain't your right. grandma's Medicaid, Tony. I, nope. Okay. Nope. Yes. Well, okay. then, then we're going to give you a call. Yay, uh, we want to help you. And, yeah, and, and it's about time. I, I'm relatively healthy. That's so, great, you know, and we want to keep you. And we want to keep you healthy. 
you know, but, uh, you know, at this age, you know, you wonder, you know, I know. what possibly happen. Hey, you never know when a tree branch could fall on your head, too. You know, you know. You know. Well, All right, I we'll talk to you Monday, okay. Tony. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. And I'm going to go to Gary in Chictawaga. Hey, Gary. Oh, how are you today? Good. Hey, um, quick question here. Um, my mother uh, left my daughter um, a home, and uh, the value of the home is at $96,000 as is. And um, she's going to be willed that um, when my mother passes on, and she's actually very sick right now or going through her things. And um, will my daughter have to pay any taxes on that home? Uh, her income is probably about two or 3000 just enough to pay the taxes. And my mother does not owe anything on the home. All right, so let me ask you this. This is Grandma's house. And Correct. Grandma did not change the deed. It's just going to go from her name to your daughter's name through the estate. Correct? Correct. Okay. So your your daughter is going to get the house at the fair market value of ninety six thousand. All right. Okay. That's what's okay. going to. That's her basis. Let's say fifteen years from now, your daughter is now a, a, a an adult, and she uh -huh. decides to sell it. And let's say it sells for two hundred thousand. And let's right. just say that she didn't put anything into the house. She'd have a hundred and four thousand dollar gain then, and that's what she'd pay taxes on. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so she don't pay any taxes except for whatever fees the county charges to do the to do the paperwork. That's right. So She's going to pay property taxes, but no income tax. Right, right, right. She'll be paying property taxes right. and water and all the other jazz. Okay. Right. But if she were to sell the house, even 10 years from now, she would be paying taxes on capital gains. On the tax. gain. Now, on the gain. okay, now what, what, Nate, well, that's, that's if she doesn't live in it. But if she lives in it, and she lives in it two out of the last uh, uh, five years, the first $250,000, if she's single, is going to be tax-free. So she may never pay taxes on it Oh, if okay. she moves well, into the house. Okay, so basically, okay, yeah. Well, she, she doesn't live in the house yet. No, but uh, I mean, okay. if she makes it her own, Gary, and right. she sells it, and the gain is less than 250000 and again, using current tax law, she would pay no taxes. Oh, okay. So if she were to get the house, then turn around and sell it, she wouldn't pay any tax on the... No. On the, no? no. Not, un, oh, not okay. unless... All right. If she gets it now worth 96, sells it for 96, no gain. Gets it for 96, sells it without living in it for a hundred, four thousand $4,000 gain. Okay? Oh. But okay, if she gotcha. moves into it for two years... Uh, uh, in the and within a five year period, then the first two hundred fifty thousand dollars in gain is going to be tax free. Okay. Okay. Right, get you on that. Okay. Real, real quick question. I can't. I'm I run sorry. out of time, Gary. Sorry. Uh, so sorry. Question. Thanks for calling. Sorry. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady. Uh, if you need help with this insurance stuff, we have specialists for you. We have Tim Eliason, six three two seven eight eight six. Until next Saturday, I'm Esther Gullius with Tim Eliason. We want to help. Call EG Tax or visit us online, egtax.com. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.